Okay, we're ready to start. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is our first demo day of Growth Law Firm for the year of 2022. My name is Yerdena Rel Cohen, and I head our firm's uh, business development efforts of our high-tech practice. I work a lot with startups and investors and connect them with one another. And we, we've had this initiative, I think, in the end of 2020, starting 2021, uh, hosting demo days and connecting between founders and, uh, and investors. And during 2021, uh, we hosted seven events and connected more than 30 companies with investors. And so we are very excited to kick off this year uh, with our event today and our team of founders uh, we have here today with us. So before we start, I want to thank you again for joining us and welcome Ayal Shenav, head of our high-tech and venture capital practice, to say something. Thank you, Yerden. Uh, so I'll be very brief. Uh, I had COVID. I'm at home for the whole week. Uh, this is my last day of uh, detention. But thank God uh, we soon we can do it uh, even from home. And once again, it's a great uh, opportunity uh, to meet five, actually four. We had five, but one just uh, notified that he will not join us today. We'll then we'll explain in a minute why. Uh, four great companies. And uh, thank you all the uh, panelists, all the members uh, of the companies for joining us and all the investors. And looking forward to a great event. Thank you again for organizing it. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'll give a short reminder of how this format uh, works. Uh, each panelist today will uh, speak for a few minutes, let's say around seven minutes, and you will have the opportunity to ask them any questions. So if you want to ask something, you can either um, write it down in the chat box or in the Q&A box, and we'll address it once they finish their speech. Um, and I would like to introduce them now. So if all founders can open their cameras for a second, uh, we have today with us Alexander Zimmerman, founder and CEO of Central F, which is a data-driven intelligence platform that measures, tracks, optimizes, and manage, manages uh, workspace and workforces strategies. We have Oriental, the VP marketing of LibiSmart, uh, which is an advanced technological platform for HR processes. He'll explain it more. We have Adir Lombroso, founder and CEO of Realforest, which is a B2B SaaS platform for selling real estate online. We don't have with us Barre Uben, the co-founder and CEO of Share. I will say a few words about him if you would like to connect with him. Unfortunately, he had happy family circumstances, so he's not here with us. But Share is a personalized culinary health sensitivity platform based on social network, crowdsourcing, and AI. So if that interests you, please contact me and I will make sure to make the introduction with Bar. And last but not least, we have Daniela Aaron Soler, co-founder and CEO of the Shuri, which is a new online mediation platform for resolving sexual harassment disputes. So that's our great team today. Have the best luck. And I think we're ready to start with Alexander. Thank you very much and thank you for hosting this event. Um, so I will share my screen and I will try to explain you what is Central F. So Central F is a data driven company. We are all about the data in order to do one thing only. We help companies optimize their critical workplace and workforce decisions. When I'm talking about this one small thing, it's actually huge because we are talking about two most biggest assets of yours, your people and your facilities. How are we doing that? So we decided that in the new world, you cannot drive your company anymore by looking at facilities as a kind of a different entity and at your employees as another one. You have to combine between those in order to truly understand what's going on there. So what we are doing, we're taking three major data junctions, uh, your assets, your people, and your business performance in order to understand how can you optimize them together. 
So the situation today, everybody knows that the great resignation shuttering businesses. Uh, leaders and companies don't actually know what to do, how to act. They have people moving around. They have people relocating to other states if we are talking in, about US. They have people uh, relocating to another countries if we are talking about EU. Even in our small Israel, we are talking about a lot of people that decided to move from center to north or to south. So what should I do? Management missing a tool, a relevant data to drive this change and employees are still want to be and feel inclusive. So we are approaching two markets. If you will think in the end, it's the same one, but our approach is to differentiate between them. The first one is a company. And one of the quote that we received and you're currently look at it is a quote that says that by using central F toolkit, it's like in opening your own fully automated data-driven workspace strategy department. What we are doing is we're helping companies to optimize their facilities, to optimize the utilization of their facilities, to optimize the connection between people and eventually their efficiency. The second part is it might be even a greater problem for the companies who are dealing with corporate services, brokers, and landlords. Building stays half empty. And I'm not talking in particular about Tel Aviv, but every square meter of Tel Aviv, if it gets free, five people want to take it. Yeah, and this is all because of this startup nation of ours we do see that companies are not intent to come back fully to the office, at least not in the next 10 to 12 uh, to 20, sorry, years. So what should we do? Companies that looking into property management or dealing with property management, they made money out of transactions. Currently, they have less transactions and they're selling less space or they're leasing less space. So what we're doing, we're helping brokers, we're helping corporate services to truly understand their client needs and to pack the buildings in the most efficient way. As an example, if you currently have a client that comes to you and says, hi, I want to take 10,000 square meters, you can analyze it through the central F platform. You can analyze the client company through the central F platform, and you can tell them you don't actually need 10,000 square meters. You need 2,000 square meters in Tel Aviv, 2,000 square meter out there, and another 3,000, and maybe several co-working. All of these were fully automated by our platform. Our regular clients are big software companies, insurance group, financial organizations, and many more. How are we doing that? So we are taking the company data lake, all of the data that company has in their heads, and also the data warehouse, the structured or more structured data. We're feeding our patented machine learning algorithms and we're getting reports out of it in order to understand and to suggest what company can do with their facilities and their workforce. I will stop here for a second just to show you what kind of data we're gathering. So think about, you have data in HubSpot, you have data in Waze, you have data in Robin, you have data in Outlook, in Slack, in WhatsApp, in Atlassian, Monday, Zoom, and all of our um, software that you're using. Each and one of those can provide you with kind of insight, but you don't actually know if there a correlation between and can you provide with much more wiser insights when you're combining everything. So this is exactly what Central F does. We're taking all of this data, we're combining it in order to provide with insights. What kind of insights we are providing? So here you can see a use case that we provided to one of the clients in New York. 
These clients have about 15,000 meters on Upper Manhattan around the Harlem side. And we realize that all of his employees are coming from different directions and different locations of their home. So you can see on this commuting map that our algorithms actually found better spots of where should he put his office. Then we look at through the real estate data in order to understand prices in different areas. And by combining this, we came and said, okay, you need only 3,000 square meters around Soho, New York. You need another office on a Brooklyn site. And you should consider free co-working locations in order to provide your people with carbolational area in these free areas. Of course, all of these coming with very um, easy to understand explanations, vi uh, visuals, graphs, and all of those. Another thing that we are providing, our machine learning algorithm actually creates different scenarios of relocation. So in here, you can see different and alternatives by using a long list, by using long list together with co-working, by using co-workings only, and we are able to provide with actual data on how much you will save in commuting, how much you will save on your real estate with zero loss in collaboration, because eventually your facilities are about people. There is no more world when you're buying an office and then you're stuffing it with people. You will build your office around people. But then we came to a question, or I will tell you a little bit later, but actually this question came before. When we came to a question, how should I measure it? The measure, uh, sorry, how should I manage it? So we created a fully automated platform that where people can see who's coming to the office, can invite a place, can invite a location, a specific location, and choose between different offices. And eventually, the manager will see all of the scheduling, all of the collaborational matters, all of the um, how many people are actually to expect, what is his utilization. So what we're talking about, we have already thousands of employees on the management, mostly in Israel and US. We pivoted from management platform to data-like, and it seems that the data analytical fit, that the data analytical tool is actually our uh, product market fit. We are looking for five million dollars to achieve several uh, points in our growth. First of all, to grow from several thousand to tens of thousands of users. We are currently through talks with the big four, where, while one of them are actually our client. I just cannot tell who is it, but we are talking with Deloitte, EY, PwC, and KPMG to be the tool behind their consultancy to the companies who are currently don't know what to do. And also, we are very, in, in very progressive situation on, on collaboration with companies such as CBRE, GLL, Cushman, and Avison Young to provide our um, capabilities to their brokers and workspace. And of course, we want to enhance our patented deep learning and dynamic learning machine algorithms. Who are we? We're a team of well-experienced people. We're talking here about years and years of development. We are very diverse. We are still around the world. We do believe in hybrid. Last year, we've been accepted to the Modern Venture Fund Accelerator in US. It's a well-known one, and they actually opened it our, uh, us a lot of doors to GLL, CBR, Kushman. And just last week, we won the startup competition in the Cannes, France. Uh, so we won the Propel by MIPIM uh, data category of the, the most disrupting startup in PropTech. Um, this is pretty it. I would love to provide you with much more information. Please feel free to contact me. I would love to answer any question if you have.
Thank you, Alexander. That was super interesting and congratulations. Uh, I have a question actually. If a company is now uh, committed to a long term lease agreement, uh, can Central Left help them or, or what can they do now? Well, it's a great question. And this is a question that we've been often asking by the companies. So, first of all, we already made some projects with companies that shows that even if you release partly this space, of course, you can sublease it, of course, you can use it for some other events, but if you will shut down only the electricity, you will save a lot. The second thing, landlords and brokers are understanding which situation they are. They're much more uh, will to, re, to, to, to rethink the current leases because we do understand either they will let you like to squeeze your footprint or you will leave them after the lease will end. So it's a beautiful question. We do actually know that this is a concern of many companies, but we know how to help them even with that. Nice. Yeah, then we have a question from the audience. Oh, yeah, we have a question. Uh, yeah. Do you expect to have more customers who are brokers, prop managers, or more who are companies renting space? Yeah, it's yeah, a I had another question. question. This yeah, it's a great question. And actually, the only answer I can tell or, or the only answer I can give, the market will make his decision. So we do understand that this is a quite of a different focus. With that, we do ready to make this two products and to develop it in two different ways. Of course, we will need more staff to be involved because we cannot do uh, both things like simultaneously but we developed our product in the way that you're using the same platform you're just looking at the results in different way our expectation the companies will drive the market more than the uh, property management or companies again such as Cushman, CBRE and GLL What's the incentive for, for property manager or managers to work with you? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a question that we've been asked like on a daily basis when we meet them. So first of all, better planning. They can actually understand how much toilet paper we will need next Tuesday. So they can make great, like, like a lot of savings to only understand the future use. Another thing, they can move to different revenue models while the customers, the tenants will pay not only per square meter, but also per utilization. So they can make more money out of each meter. And by the way, we already made a pilot with this hypothesis. So if I'm come to you, you know, if I'm come to Gross and, and I'm asking, guys, you're currently sitting on, let's say, 10,000 square meters and you are paying $10 per square meter. Will you accept to use only six and pay $11 per square meter while you're able to manage the same, uh, uh, like, um, uh, the, the same situation that everybody have their place and everyone uh, have the place to sit, probably the answer will be yes. So I will be able to sell less space for more money and to bring more clients. Thank you. That was super interesting. If there are no, no more questions, oh, I see there is another one. Uh, what is the yearly re uh, revenue reached in 2021 and when was the company founded? Yeah, the company, uh, we are delivering, I will start with the second one. So the company is a US entity. We uh, opened the, con uh, the company at 2020, April 2020. We're a Delawarean company. And the second question, I would love to answer it via more private talk. Uh, because this one is recorded, goes on YouTube. So uh, 
please uh, forgive me for that answer. I would love to provide with every possible information. I'll happily make the connection. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, let's welcome Orental from LibiSmart. Yes, just one second, please. Let me share the screen. One moment. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, uh, Jordan? Yes, everything. Okay, great. So, so good evening. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy and uh, excited uh, to introduce you to Libby Smart. Thank you very much uh, for joining. I'm uh, Oriental, one of the company's uh, co founder and VP marketing. My background is uh, computer science. I also hold an honored MBA in international uh, marketing. Uh, I have over 15 years of uh, experience in various marketing uh, management positions. And thank you very much for joining and, uh, and let's start. Let's take a moment and try to imagine a world where artificial intelligence become the recruiter. Imagine a smart data recruiter that finds candidate for job, filters, screen, communicates with candidates, analyze all the results, and matches the best and suitable candidates for any job. LibiSmart, LibiSmart was developed in order to solve one of the main problems in the recruitment process, candidate screening. Today, although we have an advanced technology, candidate screening still takes lots of time, done manually by human recruiters, and the communication with candidates is messy and broken. So we're asking always how human recruiter can find the best candidate among 200 candidates. Is that even possible? In some cases, it may take days or even weeks. So I'm very happy to introduce you Libby Smart. Libby Smart knows to find the best and suitable candidates in less than five minutes. So what is Libby Smart? Libby Smart is an AI-based advanced technological platform for locating, filtering, screening, and matching candidates in the recruitment processes. The system was designed to manage candidates, automate candidate screening, reduce recruiting costs, and increase recruiting speed and revenues. We can tell you that with LibiSmart system, companies can hire much faster. They are more focused and extremely efficient. So where are we today? LibiSmart is an active and live product for one and a half years. We have customers in Israel and in Europe. The system already communicated with 100,000 active users with more than 300,000 engagement communication messages. We apply for a patent, which is currently in the PCT state for the algorithm of the breeding profile system. The different breeding profile system is the main system, the main algorithm of the, of the system. And we have detailed marketing, development, R&D, and clear roadmap and target. Let's meet the team. We are very proud on our team. Our team consists of professionals with extensive experience in technology, international marketing, and business management with over 25 years of experience. Company's uh, CEO is Mr. Arya Bichler, which is a founder and CEO of one of the biggest, one of the biggest HR, human resources companies in Israel. He has over 30 years of experience in management in Israel and companies abroad. All of the technology is managed by uh, one of the co-founder, Yaniv Ozana. Yaniv has 20 years of experience in R&D, is working at very leading in leading high tech companies like Varian, HP, Mercury Interactive, and so on. 
are also very proud to have the house Mr. Uriel Lin on our advisory board. Mr. Uriel Lin is currently the president of the Israeli Chamber of Commerce Federation and the former member of the parliament. That's it. So as we start that, let's try to imagine a world where AI becomes the recruiter. Well, I hope after this quick and short presentation, you will find that you don't have to imagine because Libby Smart is already, already here. He's working and he's doing, doing just great. If you have more questions or you would like to get more information and more detail, we'll be very happy to take it offline to meet and give you all the necessary information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oren. Uh, I don't think you mentioned how much are you raising now. Maybe uh, you can mention it. I definitely we can make we can mention it. Uh, we are raising 2.5 million euro for a specific plan of R&D and going into market to increase our sales effort. We currently have customers in Europe and we would like to expand our activities. In Europe. Okay, thank you for uh, mentioning. I know HR processes are super complicated and I, I know this is a, a very uh, wide problem that is now tr being tried to, to to being solved, sorry, <laughs> by uh, by technology. So if you can maybe elaborate a bit more why Libby Smart is unique. I would be happy, I would be happy. I think that uh, uh, what makes us unique is that the system is a user-driven product. The system was developed based on real needs after a deep investigation. Our co our co founder and co partners are a very leading leading company leading HR company in Israel, and we investigated all this issue together with them, and we found that the pain the, the main problem is screening candidate manually. It takes a lot of time. It done based on dry data, and we develop a breeding profile system, which is a machine learning. Our breeding profile system, learning candidate preference, communicate with them all the time. And the system knows in real time if the candidates are relevant, are suitable for the job or not. This is the most important and the, the painful thing in all the HR process and all the recruitment process. And that's what makes us unique, our breeding profile system. That also connects directly to a question we just got uh, from some someone uh, from the crowd. So if you can maybe elaborate how the candidate is, uh, the match is being measured, like what factor are you taking uh, in consideration regarding the candidate? Our system is communicating with candidates with all, all the communication channels that uh, you can imagine. It can be uh, through WhatsApp, it's, it can be through Viber in, in some places, it can be even through email and, and so on. And the, the, the system communicate and, and like having a conversation with the candidate. And during this conversation for machine learning, we learn, the system learn all the preference, the system learn everything the candidate uh, want, require it. And it's above a dry data, it's above data of uh, CVs, it's it's more accurate. Uh, it's in 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 real time, and the system know to do all the necessary calculation to find the relevant job for this uh, for this candidate, and it works in thousands and and tens of thousands in the same in the same time, and uh, it works just great. At the moment, we have. 100,000 candidates that are using the system and with 300,000 communication channels, uh, tens of, uh, of, of recruitment companies are using this and uh, it's going, going very well. Uh, I see there's another question. What's the objective function for a candidate match? So how, how would you... Which function is, is uh, let's say, 
the most known or used or objective? <laughs> Uh, this, this is a very good question. I'll be happy to take it offline. Uh, but uh, basically, it, it depends per job, per requirement, per company. Uh, there are lots of lots of parameters uh, for any any type of position, for any type of jobs, and there are a lot of uh, parameters for any type of uh, of profile. And the system knows to learn. System is always learning. Always learning and suggesting recruiters uh, listen uh, from my based on the information I have, I recommend you to contact this one. I recommend you to contact this two, three, four, five, ten people. These are the best for you. So it's a, uh, you need to see the bigger picture and I will be very happy to take it uh, offline. Perfect. Let's take the last question. Uh, what's your business model? Is it for a search or a subscription and who pays it? Okay, so so thank you very much for this question. Uh, our, our, actually, our clients are uh, companies that have 200 employees and more, that have uh, tens of, uh, tens of uh, at least tens of open positions. For example, you have companies that have more than uh, 300 open positions every month. And the business model, it's a SaaS platform and it's based on, on the packages, based on the amount of candidates and the amount of uh, communication with candidates and so on. So it's a SaaS platform based on three main business model, uh, sorry, three uh, main uh, packages. And each package has its own uh, criteria uh, with regards to the number of candidates, number of distribution, number of jobs, number of matches, number of uh, suggestions, and so on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Oren. Uh, and I want to move on uh, to Adir Lombroso from Report. So if you can, thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Oren. Um, thank you for having us in this demo day. Uh, I will share my screen. Just let me know that you can hear me and see everything Perfect. as well. Yeah. All right. So first, um, thank you everybody. I will start with the story on how we have helped our uh, client Azorim, uh, a real estate um, developer based on Israel to sell 479 residential units uh, in a value of over 1.2 billion shekels in just two days using our platform online. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Adir Lombroso. I am planning, managing and uh, maintaining web application and digital products for last 15 years under Interjet, my software house. Um, throughout the years, we have worked a lot with uh, real estate developers, uh, facing a lot of uh, challenges, pains, and problems in the marketing and selling phases. We are managing their leads, helping them to build websites, and helping them to create campaigns in order to reach wider audience and increase their conversions. Uh, basically, we have found that most of real estate developers are facing the same type of problems and challenges and validating those problems also abroad in New York, Florida, in the Emirates and in London, we have found a common ground of issues that we should, or the world should uh, fix uh, when we look at the future. So actually the first problem or, or the general issue is that the selling process itself is pretty much look like it had been done decades ago. And even after all the visualization and virtual tools or every ex experience that you can have online, eventually when, when you would like to, to purchase an apartment, you will have to go physically to someone to speak with the person to do some paperwork. And uh, the real estate developer actually invest a lot of efforts and money and time with this, those um, phases of marketing and sales. Second problem is that most of the real estate developers are um, blocking the potential buyers in the most when they are most excited and willing to go forward. So instead of letting them engage deeper in the project, in most cases, when you are stumble into a development advertisement, you would be required to leave your details and hope for someone to call you in a, in a good time for to speak. So after validating those challenges and problems and understanding that most of 
marketing and sales efforts of real estate developers today versus other, other verticals and comparing to other verticals, we found that most of the money is going to waste and the funnels, for instance, in Israel, for every 1,000 people, uh, it may be that one will reach to, to meet the sales agent eventually and may close a deal um, regarding the specific project. So what we've done, we reimagine or reinvent bottom up uh, the purchase experience of real estate on how we think it should be uh, conducted from a futuristic point of view and actually how our children or grandchildren will eventually purchase real estate and what experience that they're gonna go through based on the assumption that anyone should be able to purchase real estate from anywhere in the world at any time. So we introduced Real Forest just last year and uh, a data-driven platform for selling condominiums. Condominiums are, is the segment that we are focused on at the start. Eventually we would like to go and deal with other uh, verticals like commercial real estate and housing. What we're doing today, we already created a platform that works as a B2B SaaS platform that enables every real estate developer in the world to set up easily his project online, either publicly or privately to specific group of leads, and then enable people to just browse between buildings, floors, units, get information, and eventually um, sign digitally and pay. The today's solution, the B2B platform, is just the basic of what, where we want to go. Eventually, we'd like to go also to the side of the potential buyer, to the consumer, helping them to find better deals in financing those purchases, uh, connecting them to banks and uh, loan organizations, and also enable crypto holdings, uh, crypto holders, to uh, realize their uh, currencies with real estate. Today we know about, about $1 trillion in cryptocurrencies. One of the most uh, challenges of those crypto holding is how we are actually realizing those digital numbers to something that I can feel. So this is another um, aspect of our solution that we will go and um, develop later on this year. We also tackle this issue of not blocking the potential buyer when he's most excited, uh, other than giving the, the option to dive deeper and engage with the project and uh, reserve either independently or with the help of a sales agent online. The fact that we are enabling the real estate developer to um, display the information in a transparent uh, way help or increases the buyer confidence and help eventually to, to create a deal. I don't know if either one of you know this feeling of taking a seat in a plane or in a theater. So the, the simple fact of displaying the structure of the seats uh, it, it encourage you to, to close the transaction because you understand it will not go or last forever. So getting back to the story I begin with, in last year, we have one of our clients as a rim to say, sell an entire project actually Hopefully the video will go through well, but it looked like this more or less. This is our first version of the platform uh, with three, 33 agents selling exactly like they used to sell physically, but this time online, meeting with other hundreds of clients online, displaying real-time availability of an, uh, an information, help, helping them to get to decision. But actually in two days we have sold the entire four buildings. And this uh, actually had uh, really great coverage because it considered to be the biggest online sale in Israel until today. We went back to the basement and plan where we want to go into the future. Currently, we are selling the real force selling B2B platform, but eventually we would like to be uh, reaching to the potential uh, buyers uh, only after we will have a significant amount of real estate developers installed on our platform, we will be enough confident to reach the consumers and offer them uh, those services I mentioned before. Technology based of real forest is data analytics, 
combination of information from the project, uh, mixing with information getting from the profile of the potential buyers or the buyers themselves, and information we are gathering from uh, the sales itself. All together will help real forest to reach meaningful insights uh, for the real estate developer, helping him uh, to plan better pricing and plan better even the structure of the buildings he's willing uh, to build in the future. We have some competition. There is no identical solution to real forest yet, but we have found some uh, companies that are taking our clients' attention, so we should uh, consider them as a competitors. And we have, and we can dive deeper, deeper, but we don't have enough time. I would just say that Real Forest is the only one who suggests end-to-end -end solution from the minute you see the advertisement up to the signature and payment in a way that you can interact with the sales agent with the two-sided agreements. And later on, again, as, we, as I mentioned before, we'll uh, tackle also financing and uh, cryptocurrencies. We are speaking about a huge market of $5 trillion worldwide, but if you will take the Israeli and the US market focusing in Florida and New York only, there are uh, 30 billion or 200 billion, depending the market in which we would like to go first. Uh, actually, actually, currently I'm in Dubai learning Dubai market is more or less the type of apartments, more or less the size of the, the Florida and New York altogether. A uh, model, business model is combined um, with three channels of income. The first one is fixed payment of every installment of a project. Second one is ongoing subscription payment of the real, real uh, estate uh, developer for the software. And the majority of the income will come from success fee for each um, reservation of a unit. So for instance, a development with 200 units uh, we will reach an income to the company of about $1.5 billion per project. We are planning to be this year with tens of projects, next year with hundreds, hundreds of projects, uh, reaching uh, hundreds of millions of dollars revenue, uh, yearly revenue. Um, actually, we just found uh, finished the B2B SaaS platform production with beginning the selling to real estate developers we would like to go forward next year with completing the financial aspects of our solution and partnership with banks and a loan organization, as well as um, enabling the crypto uh, transactions between a real estate developer who is willing to receive fiat money, traditional fiat money against a potential buyer they would like to pay with Bitcoins. And then, uh, later on to get to partnership with other companies that um, will help us to visualize and enrich the experience of, of the information of units. Uh, we are um, um, experienced, talented of people all together, trying to um, change the way people purchasing real estate online. So thank you for everybody. If any question would like uh, to answer. Oh, by the way, another thing uh, regarding um, regarding investment, we are currently uh, raising $2 million based on valuation of 10. So um, this is why we are here. We are exhibiting in uh, the International Property Show uh, in, the, uh, in this uh, Thursday. Uh, so whoever have friends here uh, would like to uh, meet with us, we will be happy. We're going to be on booth number 25. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Adir. That was very interesting. Uh, just if you can please clarify, so uh, which market is your target market currently, Israel or the US? Like, what's the no, Israel, we, we are piloting on Israel. We, we just closed with a few div big developers in Israel, but we consider the Israeli market as a pilot. Our target markets are currently Florida, New York, and Dubai. Later on, we are starting to establish uh, London, but uh, this is part of why we are uh, not, not only bootstrapping, but we are raising money because we need uh, help with the international structure of, of a bigger company. Perfect. I see we have a question. Uh, how much revenue do you project for 2022? Is it something? So uh, if I will take a one year from investment 
we will get we will get to two million dollars. So in, because we already missed the first uh, three months or the first quarter, so it can be around 1.5. Uh, 24, uh, 23 going to be around 25 million dollars, and later on we will we planning to reach uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, hopefully. Thank you. If there are no no more question, uh, questions, questions, let's welcome Daniela from uh, Gashuri. Yeah. Thank you, Adir. All right. Perfect. Good luck, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. He has to stop his sharing of screen so I can share. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. No, but I have a problem here. Okay. Okay, I'll manage it like that. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Yaden and uh, Ayal, for introducing us. Um, Good afternoon. Imagine a situation where you get hurt and unable to seek help. Imagine a situation where you are injured, you have gathered courage to face your injury, but reality slaps you in the face and that you find out that only one percentage of all victims are able to receive any form of relief that will allow them to move forward in life. Welcome to the world of sexual harassment. We've offered the first online dispute resolution app for resolving, resolving sexual harassment disputes and administer financial compensation between the parties. My name is Daniela Yaron Zoller. I'm a co-founder and founding CEO with extensive experience in management, practicing law, mediation, and member of team of the first ODR in Israel. My co-partner is Sigal Shuri, founder as well, um, um, an entrepreneur, one of the first mediators in Israel, former head of business development in Bezik, and a specialist in post-trauma therapy for sexual assault. We, by the way, are now in the process of establishing our advisory board. We just confirm, confirmed with Mr. Colin Rall, who is a major figure in the ODR uh, industry in the United States. He, by the one, he's the one who launched the first leading commercial ODR platform for eBay. Today, the way to receive compensation is either going to court face-to-face -face mediation or arbitration. But in reality, only 6% try uh, to, re to find a solution and only 1% actually reach one. There are different reasons for that, mainly the difficulty of opening again, post-trauma and having to go through adverse legal proceedings. So what do we propose? Shuri is an online mediation platform for resolving sexual harassment disputes between the victim, the offender, and third party if needed, like the employer, of course. Our solution offers a new way to reach an agreement and receive compensation without additional trauma, without meeting the offender, without lawyers or mediators, and most importantly, without exposure to the parties. It is a fully digital online mediation, online platform that is designed to dramatically increase the chances of reaching an agreement. Part parties are guided to tell their story and store it in a safe place. And when they are ready to enter an online mediation process, we will walk all parties through different questions to reach an agreement which is discrete, proportional, and ba balanced. The, ba the parties can obtain information on amounts reached by other parties in similar cases, information that does not exist today at all. We'll offer the platform directly to individuals and indirectly through workplaces, universities, army, and more. We're going to charge commission paid on each settlement that will be reached with our platform. We will start in Israel, but our next market is the United States, which in recently on February, uh, the Congress approved an amazing law, which um, is end, puts an ending to the forced arbitration in workplace, anything to do with sexual harassment. This raises a huge opportunity for Shuri because the meaning of it is that 60 million Americans that were subject to man mandatory arbitration clause will not be forced to go through arbitration anymore, which means they'll have to either have to go to court or use mediation process. This is where we come in. We are looking to raise $750,000 to allow us to begin development and start marketing. We believe it is the best timing to come forward with this platform, having a great social impact in addition for business value. Sadly, sexual harassment is a worldwide pandemic and it is only growing. 
it is also in best interest of employers to offer a neutral environment to resolving these complaints. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniela. I see there are a few questions uh, in the chat. So the first one is, uh, what enforcement mechanism is available in your app? Enforcement mechanism? What do you mean by enforcement mechanism? This is a complete mediation process, meaning the two parties have to agree or they have to be willing to go through mediation. No, it's only compensor. It's only paying a, a, a compensation. That is, if, for instance, I go into the app and I uh, I, I complain there was somebody assault uh, harass me. I the uh, app approaches the person who I claim who harassed, and he if he's willing to join join in into negotiation and uh, discuss it with me indirectly because we they don't see each other face to face. As we said, the app. Uh, um, takes them through different questions so they can reach an agreement. And once they reach an agreement, they sign it. He, the, the, whoever is the offender uh, has to pay uh, the amount uh, they agree to through the app and we uh, take our commission off. And I think the other question is more due to, I guess you have a credit card or some other way to collect. Uh, this type of, yes, yeah. But I think the question was more focused on what happens if someone agreed to pay the mediation, but didn't eventually pay, but I guess you have a credit card or something to yes. enforce it. It's, it's a it's credit card based uh, mechanism. Okay, <laughs> um, the second question is, uh, is, is it possible to appeal on a decision um, that was received? Once again, this is not a decision. It's, it's important to know this, this mechanism, mediation in general, by the way, focus on uh, uh, the needs of the parties, not the rights. There's no arbitrator, there's no judge. These are only the two parties, or maybe three parties, depends on the situation. They have to negotiate and discuss it between themselves. Th therefore, there can't be an appeal. I mean, if they agree, if they reach an agreement, that's it. End of story. They sign the agreement and they can continue on. Okay. Um, and so if we need to consider, again, the advantages of using uh, your um, platform, uh, versus the regular mediation uh, process? The regular mediation process raises a problem because the parties have to confront one each other usually because they have to first of all meet with the mediator either online or in real face to face and many times also it involves meeting the person who they claim offended them. This raises a huge problem. This is part this partially explain the reason why there's so limited uh, um, appeals when it comes to sexual harassment. Six percentage, this is the number. One percentage is the number that actually reach a solution. And the reason is because they are unable to uh, uh, deal with the post-trauma and they're still looking for some sort of relief. Compensation is a way of relief. And we believe uh, ODR is the best solution for that. Now, ODR, one has to, I, I should mention, is a, is a, is a, is a great uh, a business in the United States, especially growing old, growing through the years, and uh, there's a big potential here. Also, to, Adela, does the system also offer, uh, like a mediator, the physical mediation would offer a proposal to the party, would try no, to come up with a proposal to both parties, but is that something you can offer as well, or is it more... Just we, can, the parties with. we can offer it. We're actually debating on it right now. We're not sure. We'll have to see. The plan was at the beginning not to offer a human being mediator, but if we'll see that uh, parties are interested in mediator, it, there will be a possibility to uh, to allow it. Another, another question: um, How much did you raise in the past, and how much are you uh, looking to raise now? If I noticed you did mention it, but maybe I did mention it. Yes, no, we didn't raise any money yet. We are at a, as the, as the, one can understand at the very beginning. We're interested in raising seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in order to begin. Uh, we have already a structure of the way we're going. We're going to build uh, uh, this platform. How we're going to structure it, and uh, we try. We would like to raise this money in order to actually um, um, develop it and uh, start the marketing. I have, uh, I think, the last question, something I, I did notice you mentioned employers. Uh, yes. So I wanted to ask what's the incentive for an employer to use your mechanism in their organization? Well, the, the motivation, in our opinion, is very, uh, is very large, it's very big. Uh, first of all, it's no secret, uh, sadly, there is sexual harassment in workplaces all over the world. 
and the numbers are not going down. Now, the quality manpower in uh, workplaces is a very important resource. And the younger generation, especially, but uh, not only, of course, uh, take an organization policy towards sexual harassment very seriously. Now, a neutral, pro a neutral platform for resolving such dis dispute is an asset for these organizations. Now, as I said before, uh, a law was just passed in the United States just recently, February 7th, and they canceled the, um, the possibility to demand arbitration in workplaces. Uh, I don't have, maybe if uh, some of the audience remembers the um, protest, in, uh, the protest, the big protest was in Google. Now, uh, against, by the way, partially against the uh, uh, um, uh, media, uh, uh, excuse me, the arbitration, the compulsory arbitration. Now, the people who, the victims are not interested in uh, arbitration. They're not interested in going to court. They're not even interested in mediation face to face. They're interested in a solution without having to face the, uh, the offender. And part of the solution we believe can come from such a platform. I see there, there is another. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, more. We have a very active audience today. Uh, two questions. So the first one is how are you going to market the system? Okay. We are going to use. Uh, it's, we hope it's going to go viral. We're going, we have a few figures we're discussing now, influential figures uh, we believe can help us. Um, sadly, you open TV, you open the radio every day, there's a new story about sexual harassment, and uh, we're hoping it going viral uh, through social media, through TV, and uh, spreading it around, spreading the news about the new solution. Thank you. Uh, moving to the last question. Uh, so if one comes to an understanding of, uh, on compensation, how can they know that the victim will not proceed to criminal charges in court? Like, is there any way that they can be sure? <laughs> or any solution that you provide them as, as a system? No, we, we, it's an excellent question. Yeah, it's not the first time we've been asked that. We cannot promise that, of course. This is a totally different avenue. But in reality, as I said, very few people, very few victims actually go through, uh, go to the police, go through criminal charges. We cannot promise such a thing. One can understand that this is, has nothing to do in the civil uh, area. Thank you. Thank you very much. But I can say, I can add one last sentence that uh, we believe that uh, once uh, a victim will be compensated and will reach an agreement with the offender, which the agreement is more than just having a compensation, getting a compensation. It has in the fact that you actually reached an agreement with the person you claim offended you. Be, we believe it will end the story between them. And there will be no need for additional charges of going to the police. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Thank you. So I think uh, that we, we got to the end of this webinar. We had a great, super interesting uh, discussion today. And I wanna thank our founders uh, who joined us today, uh, Daniela, Adir, Oren, uh, Alexander. Thank you, thank you, I see you open your cameras. Uh, everyone uh, who joined us from the audience, thank you as well for joining us today. If you have any questions or you would like to, to connect to any of the startups, feel, uh, please feel free to contact us. I want to thank Ayal again for, for helping me hosting this event and putting it all together. And have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Arden. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Arden, Ayal, and good luck for all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.